Good evening, church family. Welcome to Theology Tuesday. I'm Elder Savannah Brooks. We are great, exciting Greater St. Stephen First Church, and we're located at 3728 Eastbury Street at the corner of Sydney at Eastbury in the heart of Southeast Fort Worth, Texas. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 51240, Fort Worth, Texas 76105. We have been in this new study for the last several weeks uh, based on a book by Vashti Murphy McKenzie titled The Big Deal of Taking Small Steps to Move Closer to God. And we will take a look at the small steps we can take to move closer to God. Bishop McKenzie prescribes very small changes that lead to radical closeness to God. This evening, you, we will continue our study on discover. Remember last week I said, we're, she's challenging us to discover God's word simply by studying God's word. And so we're gonna continue in that study tonight. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to study your word. God, we ask that you would engage our understanding, empower our understanding, that we might hear and, and un understand and be able to grasp what is being shared with us tonight. God, we pray that this lesson, because of what we hear in this lesson, in this study, we're able to make manifest in our lives. It's in your name we ask it all, amen. Everyone needs light. We need physical light, as you can see here in the sanctuary, uh, to make sure we can see around us. Uh, if it were totally dark in here, I probably would not be able to maneuver throughout all these pews. So we need light so that we can simply see the world around us to avoid running into obstacles. You know, when you get up at night, if you don't turn your lights on, you know your house pretty well. But if you were at somebody else's house, you really could maneuver in the dead of night when there's no light. But everyone needs light. Through God's word, God provides light for our mind too. The Bible says in Psalm 109 verse 130, the unfolding of your word gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. The unfolding of your words give light. It imparts understanding to the simple. Psalm 119, 130. God wants to give us light too. God wants to light up our minds with the truth of who God is. Through God's word, God helps you and he helps me to see life through a different perspective. Last week, I shared that God's word should engage both our mind and our heart as we uh, are to love the Lord with all our mind and with all our heart. Our minds are renewed when we engage the word of God. Our hearts are transformed when we engage the word of God. When we fail to read the word of God, we fail to utilize available power. I mean, if we never turn on the light switch, we don't have light. If we never plug into the outlet, we never have the source of the power we need. If we never engage God's word, we fail to utilize the power that is made available to us through God's word. Last week, we talked about the challenge of discovering God's word through study, recognizing that the Bible is more than a book and see the value in the stories to affirm God's power to handle any circumstance has not diminished. We heard it last week. We may have said it to ourselves and typed in the comments, I'm up for the challenge. We heard it last week, but now what? The apostle James says to do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, do what it says, that's James 1, Now what? You heard it last week, the call to study God's word. Now what? How will we meet the challenge? Bishop McKenzie in this book says that if we make small steps, it will pay off big and help us to draw closer to God. Now what? 
It's time for action this week. What actions can we take? What will we do in response? What small steps will we take or will you or I take this week? Last week, you may have said, oh, okay, I can do that, I, I can study. But the question is, did you actually make a plan to study? Let me suggest that you make a study plan. In, in order to do that, I, I'm asking or saying to you, ask yourself several questions. Where will you study? What place? Where, where, what's the location? Will you stay in your bed? Will you stay in your room? Will you go to the dining room? Will you sit at the kitchen table? Will you study outside? Where will you study? What's the place? When will you study? What's the time? Will I, I'm uh, fresh in the morning or am I better in the evening or is it better after midnight when everybody else has gone to bed? What time will I study the Word of God? Have you made a plan? How long will I study? Will I study for five minutes? Will I study for 25 minutes? Will I study for 45 minutes? How long will you study? And what will you need for your study? Will I need a Bible? Will I need a commentary? Will I need paper and pens and highlighters? What will I need to study? Did you make a plan? That's all I'm asking. See, all of these are great, great questions to answer so that you can develop a plan. These questions help us take care of the small details that can derail our success and even prevent us from getting started. If we don't have a set time, well, I'll study tomorrow in the afternoon. Well, what time in the afternoon? Be specific with the plan that you make. Develop a study plan. When we have a plan, it is likely that we will follow through. I know you're familiar with the quote, failing to plan is planning to fail. This is something that we must not fail in. It is through our study that we come to know the authority of God's word and are able to engage its power in our lives. Remember last week I talked about the lima bean and how we can reproduce peace and joy and, and, and love and happiness in our life by studying God's word word. We don't want to miss out on the power that is available to us through the study of God's word. I'm suggesting to you to develop a plan and then allow me to suggest to you that you feed yourself. Well, what do you mean? Think about it. I have two children. My daughter is 34. My son is 31. It would look strange if I were still feeding them you know, cutting up their food and putting it in their mouth if I was still feeding them as I did when they were little children. If I insisted on cutting up or straining their food as adults, that would be bizarre to say the least. Well, it works that way with us. You can get some food on Sunday morning through the sermon, but you must be willing to feed yourself through personal Bible study. We must feed ourselves. It's okay to feed infants, but there comes a time when we need to feed ourselves. We cannot grow through our spiritual lives expecting, or we cannot go through our spiritual lives expecting that someone else feed us the Word of God. We are invited to move from the milk of the word to the meat of the word. Just like when you moved your baby from formula to solid food, we too must move from milk to something more solid. I'm suggesting that you get in the habit of feeding yourself. Lastly, let me suggest to you that studying the word of God will help us mature spiritually. As we learn scripture, we can begin to speak it over our lives. We can make declarations of God's word over our lives. The word of God is the sword that Jesus uses to defeat his enemies. You can use the word of God to defeat the enemy and his schemes in your life. In every instance of temptation, Jesus defeats Satan by speaking, by quoting the word of God. We must begin to declare, to speak, to open up our mouths with the word of God. We can't do it if we don't know the word of God. We can't speak what we don't know. 
as we learn the power in God's word, God's spirit gets involved. The learning going on in our heads then moves to our hearts. It's in this process that we can examine ourselves and gain understanding. God's word teaches us the standard of how to live that is opposed to the standard of the world. God's word teaches us God's standards, how we are to live versus us being told by the world how we ought to live. God's word teaches us that standard. Studying scripture equips, guides, and reveals how to live in life-giving ways that deepen our friendship with God. That's the big deal of taking small steps to move closer to God. The small step of creating a plan, having a specific place and time, and having all the materials you need in one place. The small step of finding the inspiration to feed yourself and not relying on others to feed you. Good evening, church family. I'm Elder Savannah Brooks. Thank you for joining me this evening on Theology Tuesday. Are you up for the challenge to create a study plan? Are you up for the challenge to feed yourself and to grow by God's word? I'm up for the challenge. Be blessed.